Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yisrael Hawkins. Well, in the news this week, Katan, North Korea launching another missile test, this one going further than any of their previous missile tests, so we'll have those details. Also, a secret Saudi-Israel meeting, and uh, mm. wonder what they're, they're, they're discussing, right. and also a milestone for the New York Stock Exchange. But first, food. Something many of us may take for granted. We can open our cupboards or refrigerator and it's there. We go to the grocery store or the open markets and even sometimes in our own backyards and may find it in abundance. But now food has become a scarce commodity to many in some countries. Drought is a contributing factor as we talked about before, but increasingly cutting off people's access to food supplies is now being used as a weapon of war. Well, the U.N. recently reported accusations that the South Sudanese government halted food aid to the western parts of its own country where they were fighting rebel forces. However, the government there denied these claims. Uh, the five-year-long war in Syria has forced citizens of eastern Wuta to scavenge through rubbish bins as well as eat animal food. Uh, there. Uh, there is, uh, and there's Yemen, which we've reported on previously in the news. Yemen is in the spotlight as the worst man-made famine we have seen in decades. More than 7 million Yemenis are on the brink of starvation in what the Norwegian Refugee Council has called illegal collective punishment. In an interview with Al Jazeera News, executive director of the World Peace Foundation, and author of Mass Starvation, The History and Future of Famine, Mr. Alex Duvall, called Yemen the famine crime of our generation. Mm -hmm. He said, there has been no international response to the plight of the Yemenese people up to this point. And what is taking place is, quote, the destruction of an entire country through gradual degradation of its economic infrastructure, its social welfare in infrastructure, the deprivation of food. Mm -hmm. But Katan, isn't there a red line that countries have when it comes to war tactics like the starvation? I'm sure, you know, many, many countries have those red lines and they have their doctrine in place to basically protect humanity. For instance, uh, the use of chemical weapons in other countries. Which is a big no-no. Uh, that's right. Um, that opens up an outcry for investigations of war crimes if that is suspected. However, when it comes to famine, Duval says it has not been seen as a red line. Wow. So nothing there governing that. This, he says, is due largely to the fact that world powers like the United Kingdom and the United States have a history of using the same strategies of blockade and starvation in their military tactics. So they are not willing to call it a war crime, but we can see it clearly is a crime against humanity. Duval believes that famine should be outlawed, considering it, quote, completely toxic and unacceptable. He explained, unless major efforts are made not only to bring in immediate humanitarian assistance to open the airports to revive and rebuild the healthcare infrastructure, but also to rebuild the basic economy, this is going to be a disaster that will last a generation. So Yemen is officially in a state of famine due to the Saudi-led coalition blockade, but that doesn't really mean anything to the international powers that be. While humanitarian agencies generate publicity, uh, there are no legal mechanisms in place to help and no governments are obligated to act to prevent such a famine from taking place. So in other words, Jeff, no one is doing anything to stop it. And really, Katan, we could talk about the famine all day long, but until you actually look at the pictures and the videos coming out 
uh, from uh, like places like like Yemen mm -hmm. and see how the famine and the starvation has truly affected. You just don't feel um, that sense of crisis there. Sure, sure. Now, older children of 12 and 15 have been reduced to babies, not having the strength to even cry. Their skin clings to their bones and their eyes bulge from their sockets. Now, the trauma of severe malnutrition is something unconceivable to many of us, but just imagine for a moment if it was someone you knew. Well, not only has the blockade cut off food to the Yemenis, but also much needed aid to hospitals, including medicine for fevers, painkillers, even oxygen. If that wasn't enough, the water supplies have become, become contaminated in many areas, which has created a cholera epidemic. The 19th century disease is spreading so fast that there are over 5,000 cases of cholera reported daily. Saddest of all, 40% of those cases are children. And now they're saying that there's no place in the country not affected with that cholera disease. Wow, that's horrible. Well, many are dying from the disease in the besieged country that has known only sorrow and suffering for the last three years. One man who lost his four-year-old son to the sickness told NBC News very simply, my son died of cholera because the water is contaminated. We do not have a solution for this well. We need a solution to stop this illness that has killed our children. While we see there isn't any one political entity taking charge to help the situation in the Yemeni town of Hudayda, uh, mass protests are underway. Demonstrators have taken to marching through the streets, accusing Riyadh of, uh, and its coalition of genocide. Well, it seemed the fighting between the Saudis and the Houthi rebels had quieted down for a while. Just a few weeks ago, Houthi militias fired a missile towards Riyadh, provoking the country to strengthen its blockade on Yemen, cutting off all air, sea, and land routes completely. However, due to the outcry from the UN and humanitarian aid groups, the blockade was partially lifted. Now, this has not been satisfactory for these organizations who are pushing Saudi Arabia and its allies to end the blockade altogether. And they're saying that, yes, um, opening up is helping, but really we need all, um, all channels, yeah. all ports open to get these people what they need. That's right. So what was meant to be a straightforward appeals judgment quickly turned to confusion. Seconds after the judges upheld Bosnian Croat military leader Slobodan Priok's 20 year sentence, the military leader stood up and said, judges, Slobodan Priok is not a war criminal. I reject your verdict with scorn. Well, as one judge cried out, stop, please, please don't. The military leader can be seen downing a shot of poison. Well, the court proceedings were halted as emergency workers were called in. However, his death was announced on Croatian television. Sad. Mm. Well, despite efforts to block North Korean strides towards developing more advanced weaponry, the nation still continues to push forward. And new missile tests this week have caused a new round of condemnation by the U.S. and other nations. Now, YPN's Larry McGee has our report. Larry? Purported images of North Korea's latest long-range missile tests are making their rounds and causing an uproar. The photos show leader Kim Jong-un personally supervising the test launch of a missile that is reportedly capable of striking the U.S. Following the exhibition, South Korea, Japan, and the U.S. called for an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council, where U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley stated that if war does come, it will be because of continued acts of aggression like what we seen yesterday. And if war comes, she continued, make no mistake, the North Korean regime will be utterly destroyed. America is said to be urging all nations to adopt measures that will prevent the DPRK from buying and selling, in addition to also insisting that Beijing cut off its oil supply. China's response was that North Korea should comply with all relevant Security Council resolutions and cease actions that escalate tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The end game of the missile launch saw it once again fall in Japanese waters. The representative of Japan, Koro Bishu, commented that Japan will never tolerate a nuclear-armed North Korea. 
The DPRK itself is said to be raising its arms in victory after its latest test. The embattled nation is allegedly reporting that its rocket weaponry systems development is complete and it is now finally a nuclear state. The response of other UN members such as France is that in a matter of months, the North Korean threat has shifted from regional to global. Most noteworthy, however, is the tussle in the assembly between the U.S. and China and Russia. China has continued to rebuff American demands to cut off oil to the north and along with Moscow is calling instead for a freeze for freeze scenario where North Korea would slow its missile development program if the U.S. and South Korea would lower their military posture on the peninsula. America has rejected that proposal strongly and is slated, according to reports, to embark upon more joint exercises with South Korea this week. North Korea has stated that the drills are a rehearsal for war. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. It's on, Jeff. Back to you. Well, uh, by the looks of it, it definitely seems like North Korea isn't slowing down with its missile program, despite the threats and the sanctions that are posed against it from the international community. Well, the Niger government has given the U.S. permission to use drones in the country to target terrorist activity. According to RT, a leaked memo shows uh, the deal between the Pentagon and the government of Niger calling for the arming of surveillance drones operating from a local air base along with additional troop deployment. The operations will support long-term uh, strategic partnership between the U.S. and Niger, as well as the ongoing effort to counter violent extremists throughout the region. Well, since 9-11, the U.S. has used the UAVs to drop bombs on countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. U.S. drone strikes have killed an estimated 1,500 plus civilians, and the number of strikes nearly at 5,000. Wow. Now, Lawrence Freeman, an African affairs analyst, said that West African countries can be put under a lot of pressure by various Western partners. U.S. drone and troop buildup will cause international problems. This is the first time that armed drones will be flying, so this is a big problem for the Niger government and all of Africa for allowing the U.S. to carry out these types of military attacks. He continued, the strategy will not work without a larger strategic plan, and the African countries are being pressured to allow larger military buildup and drones, and he said it's not going to solve the problem, which war never does. More drones, more weapons never does solve the problem. A historic secret meeting between Israel and Saudi Arabia's crown prince has just gone down recently. The rumors of this report is coming from the Arab media, but the evidence of their diplomatic relations supports it. But of course, either country won't just come out and say such a thing took place. Even after the crown prince reportedly arrived in Israel, Saudi Arabia tried to play it off saying Qatar sent people. Hmm. Uh, if it was the Saudi prince, this is a big game changer as the move could single, uh, signal rather an important agreement, uh, actually uh, a regional ally now for Israel. Right, right. Well, the two countries have had no previous relations. In fact, the Saudis have heavily aligned themselves with the Palestinians and have pushed for the withdrawal of the Israelis from the West Bank. Now, the Arab world has voiced its criticism of the alleged meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself and discussing security ties between the two countries. Now, there has always been a speculation of secret ties between the two countries, uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel, uh, but it's been over isolated economic and military operations. Well, a visit from the Crown Prince could signal an upgrade is already underway. Mm. Well, the Dow crossed 23,000 points for the first time ever, this despite a terror attack in London and the North Korean launching a missile test again. Now, Jeremy Siegel, a professor of finance at the Wharton School, said that he thinks the Dow will hit 24,000. He said we have a lot of gains that are going to be important. We're going to see the tax cut, the Fed choice, the employment report Friday, and the Fed meeting Wednesday. He said that has never, that he has never seen a week with so many earth-shattering economic events 
as we have this week. So they're really looking for, I guess, the uh, the gains to come forth from that to reach that 24,000. Right. Fill those pockets. Well, in Washington, D.C., just moments after Michael Flynn pleaded guilty, NBC News released information from two sources familiar with the matter stating Jared Kushner, a very senior member of the presidential transition team, mentioned in a statement of offense as speaking to Michael Flynn on December 22nd about the U.N. resolution regarding Israel. This, of course, according to analysts, put Jared Kushner in the line of plotting with the Russians about diplomacy goals with the U.N. and, of course, raises the question about how high these orders came. For Jared Kushner, who is a close confidant to the president, it raises questions as whether he was speaking on behalf of the president and raises question regarding criminal exposure regarding the underlying acts. Now, according to Ari Melber, the host of MSNBC's The Beat, that means that Mike Flynn was lying to the FBI about his dealings with Russia for certain goals. Hmm. Those goals being number one, easing the sanctions put in place by the Obama administration over Russian meddling, and number two, goals that regard Middle East diplomacy to the UN, including direct contact with Russia. So that's dealing with those areas uh, uh, in, in Middle East, which we know that Russia is heavily involved with that, uh, with right. Syria and some other operations there. And um, so we're seeing a lot of these things come to light with these proceedings. Well, as you can see, the nations are strategically aligning themselves politically to achieve their own goals under the pretense of bringing peace. Starving nations, threats of war, and building up military forces will never bring mankind the joyous and peaceful life they deserve. But there is a way to peace. For many years, in fact, Israel Hawkins has been teaching that way to peace. In fact, he's dedicated his entire life's work to warning mankind of what they're bringing upon themselves, along with the peaceful solution to turn it around. Although the information that is presented by Israel Hawkins and the House of Yahweh is free, what it can produce in your life is priceless. Contact the House of Yahweh to find out more information, and when you do, don't forget to request your free copies of the Prophetic Word magazine and the monthly newsletter. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites, www.yahweh.com, www.yeshrahawkins.com, www.yahwehsbranch.com, or you can visit our website at www.ypnnews.com. If you would like to email the House of Yahweh, you can email at info at Yahweh.com. Any international calls, please call the number on your screen. And lastly, we'd like to remind you of two excellent Bible study tools on the market, absolutely free, the Israel Says program and the Ask Yisrael program. Now, you can learn more about each one of these by going to www.yisraelsays.com and www.askyisrael.com. Dot com. Well, don't go anywhere up next, Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching.